Well, folks, today we're going to talk a little bit, uh, myself and uh, Gavin, we're going to talk about the latest on the Microsoft Craft Toolkit. If you were part of the couple uh, weeks we did our journey um, around the Graph Toolkit, we did a 15 sessions on the Toolkit at the beginning of this year. Um, I was always saying that we were going to release a new version of the Graph Toolkit. Well, we are getting very, very, very close. I would love to give you a little bit of a hint of what is happening and also use this session to gather some feedback. So we're going to share a couple of links in the in the chat for you to go on and share some of the feedback you might have on the Graph Toolkit uh, so you can help us identify maybe gaps that we have or maybe um, cool ideas that you could, we could be working on for uh, our latest version of uh, the Graph Toolkit. So let's start with what is the Graph Toolkit? Maybe you're, it's the first time you're joining this community call. You don't know exactly what is the Graph Toolkit. The Toolkit is a collection of reusable framework agnostic components and off provider that allows you to access and work with Microsoft Graph. Components are fully functional, they're fully customizable, and they work with any web framework on all modern browsers. So think about a drag and drop of a component that automatically connects to Microsoft Graph and enables you to focus on your business scenarios rather than building boring controls. We're, we're taking the, 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 the work of building the controls you need, you're, you embed them in your app so you can really build business value rather than building the controls you've been asking over and over and over. Why would you think about the Graph Toolkit? First, it cuts insanely on development time. Because it's basically just a couple of lines of code that you drop into your app rather than building all the logic, all the state, all the graph management, all the tokens and everything. We take care of the hard stuff. Because it's beautiful, but it is flexible. It's built to be looking like an MT65 experience, but it's also fully customizable so you can embed it and make it really your own. And it works everywhere. We're not shipping a React uh, or an Angular specific version. We're shipping a web components version that you can add to any of your apps in any of the canvases that exist. Is it on a web page, in a Teams app, in an Electron app, in a SharePoint framework web part? Anywhere you're thinking that these controls could land, you could actually add them there. So that's really, really useful when you're building really cool applications. So. What's new for V3? We're, you're going to see today not a lot of slides, a lot of demos. Um, so what's new for V3? So first of all, we're coming with the fully refreshed components. And we're going to build all our components now will be fully built using Fluent UI, um, which is the design language that a lot of the applications here in Microsoft are uh, leveraging. And these components are now available to see. So I'm going to show you a sneak peek of some of these components. Uh, we're even going to share with you um, a link to a, uh, a storybook where you can try them out. This storybook will not probably stay for very, very long. But if you want to use it, I'll be more than happy to direct you to another link afterwards so you can use it in the future. We're also bringing a really anticipated feature um, I'll, I'll see a couple of interesting questions in the chat. I'm going to come back to the questions afterwards because these are cool. Um, one of the most anticipated feature of V3 is multi-account support. So you will be able to leverage our login component to log into multiple accounts at the same time and shift from one identity to the other one, like the rest of the M365 applications. Really, really cool control right there. Generic picker control. We're going to build a new control that will allow you to pick an entity from graph in a very generic way. Think about how we're doing it with our MGT get, but in a, uh, a picking experience. So very similar. Um, we will be having something called the disambiguation feature that will be built in. Um, and you're absolutely right, um, uh, Gavin. It's not node uh, 16, it's 14 and 16 for now. Look at that, changing stuff on the fly while doing a demo. How great is that? Um, our disambiguation feature will be built in, and Gavin will be showing a cool demo of this for all of our SharePoint framework 
developers in the room, this will be the feature you're expecting for MGT to work seamlessly in SPFX. Uh, we're going to come up with the support for graph, the graph JavaScript SDK v3 in our journey very soon after, potentially to start having previews around our graph JavaScript SDK v4, but that's for another talk. We're going to come back in the new year, uh, talk about what's coming up right there. We're going to support sovereign cloud. So if you're building apps that are connecting to GCC or to any of the sovereign clouds we have, you will be more than uh, happy to know that now these components will work for you. And finally, we're going to support uh, Node 14, 16, and not 12, right? Uh, because it's actually not supported anymore by Node. Right now, we're having a little bit of a uh, question on Node 18, because actually SPFX does not support Node 18 today. So we're kind of uh, in, a, in, a, in a state right now where we're, we're waiting for the SharePoint framework to support Node 18. So, well, let's go and do some cool demos, I think. Let me go here, open up the browser right here, and now you can see our um, playground. And I'm going to share the link to this playground if you want to play. And just to show you that this is all real code running in a real environment. We're not faking anything here. Well, maybe. You'll see. If, if, if you can spot it, then uh, uh, you're great. Uh, no, I'm joking. There's not going to be any, any fake here. So the first thing I wanted to show is the ability now to support multiple accounts in our login component, um, we're not in, a, in we're not logged into that uh, storybook. So I'm going to show you in a way that is that's where we're going to fake it. To be fairly honest, uh, but it is um, what the, the fee, I want to show you the feature right right here. So when you're logging in, I'm already logged in as Megan here. I have the ability to actually change. Let me just zoom out a little bit here. Uh, to change the account to Emily Brown or also to sign in with a different account. So you will always have this ability to have uh, many accounts connected at the same time, like in any other M365 application. So if you're building an app where you are controlling the login experience, I think this is going to be a great feature to onboard. This is due to us leveraging the latest um, around MSAL that will be there. So that's really, really cool. Um, second thing that I wanted to add is a quick look at some of the refreshed components. So let's look at the agenda. Uh, agenda looks like this. You're going to see some of the, our components are not necessarily very, very different. They have just been upgraded, right? But under the hood, there's a lot of components that have uh, significantly changed. Uh, so you can see here um, what our agenda components looks like. Um, we're leveraging the fluid, the, the latest Fluent UI uh, uh, V9. So to come back to all of uh, question, it is built on the latest version of Fluent, so it's on Fluent 9. Um, we're leveraging the icon, the fonts, the, the sizing, and, and, and all of this. So really, really cool. Um, then afterwards, uh, let's go to see our file list. Our file list here is also using the latest and greatest here on the file list. We were already using a lot of the Fluent stuff, so not a lot of changes happening uh, right here. Our person card has changed significantly, um, not from a visual standpoint, but now we also bring new vertical layout. So now not only you have it on the horizontal side, but now we have it on the vertical layout. So now you have the ability to have these great person components uh, showing up uh, in a vertical way. The person card, let me show you a really cool, interesting capability of the new person card while I show the new layout. So really cool layout where I can now do inline typing of your messages, not only just opening Teams, but here literally having um, a message that you can send to Emily right from here, the same way you can do it in Microsoft Teams today. So a really, really cool capability that we're bringing in to the uh, the table and all of the latest, all of the upgraded visuals that we have um, right here. Um, an an, inter an interesting new capability that we're bringing is our picker component. Our picker component is, in this case, to showcase task lists. Uh, so you have the ability to select here, and you see here how I'm. Um, using slash me slash to do slash list from graph to show all the different task lists, 
but I could actually go here and say slash me slash direct, oh, not necessarily all in caps, direct reports. And now it's going to automatically refresh and have predict to be available. So you will be able to build interesting capabilities right from there. And, and now it's really up to you to decide how you want to make it and, and shape it the way you need it for your apps. It's very developer friendly to simplify that specific capability of selecting a resource. Um, the last one I want to show you is our team shell picker because the team shell picker actually changed a lot in our uh, latest uh, release, which is here where you can select a channel where we're going to load the channel. And here you see all the um, channels that you have, the, the teams that you're a part of, and the channels that are available here. So let's say I want to go here. I want to select general. And now you're going to see um, that it's selected um, this channel there. So lots of improvements, lots of UI components that have changed. Um, we're doing this as a major release, so it might uh, bring some unexpected changes on your side. So there will be breaking changes around styling if you are styling specific elements uh, without utilizing some of our um, classes, that we, uh, classes and variables that we provide. So uh, something to look at. So, We'd love to hear your feedback on some of these if you want to take on a dependency on that next. More than happy to uh, hear about it. And now I want to hand over to Gavin um, so we can see live some of the disambiguation capabilities that we're bringing to the toolkit. Thanks, Seb. Uh, that was a great whirlwind tour of what the team's been working hard on since I joined and before. Um, so if you didn't know, I'm new to the team since July, uh, but I'm pretty happy to have landed on this pretty exciting project. Um, one of the challenges that we've heard from the SharePoint developer community is that, uh, well, to have multiple solutions in a single farm that use SharePoint framework at the moment, it doesn't work so well. We've got to have this thing called MGT SPFX, which provides all the controls and that means that all those controls are version locked to the same version. So there's no side by side version support for different versions of web parts using older or newer versions of MGT. It's not so great. Um, we've been looking at this and there's some challenges, um, but what we've come up is with a feature that we call uh, disambiguation. Um, I'm just going to share my screen now. Uh, this one. All right, uh, so you should see my Visual Studio Code instance. What we've added is a little thing, single line of code. That's easy. That's all you need to do, right? Not quite. Um, unfortunately, because of the way that this works, you actually need to start lazy loading some of the resources in here. We have added some helper functions to simplify this. Um, this particular web part is a no framework web part, so it's just plain old JavaScript. Um, if I go to, uh, sorry, I should have opened this up ahead of time. I'd like to just quickly show you what's going on under the hood in uh, there in our, uh, so we're using Dynamic imports are asynchronous imports, which use a promise to uh, report when they're fully loaded. Um, and then based on that being fully loaded, then we can actually render using MGT tags that have this disambiguation in them. Um, so if you start using this feature, you might want to put your own a uh, company name inside here just as an easy way of doing it or use a version number. We don't care. We've made this flexible. It's a completely opt-in system too. So if you're not in SharePoint land, you can just ignore this feature. It doesn't exist, doesn't impact you at all. Um, many of you in SharePoint land are probably more a little more interested in how that works in React. Um, totally fair. Um, we've got this hat working over in React as well. Um, same approach. We call this dot custom element helper with disambiguation. Um, and then in our render method for our component, we actually lazy load the component that uses the React 
components that we have as part of our MGT React library. Um, this uh, MGT demo, you can see, this is the place where we actually have our MGT components and they live there. Um, we need to make sure that we lazy load this. So this uses, makes use of React suspense in the background um, to cleanly load these things and ensure that we don't get naming conflicts. Um, to give you a sense of what that looks like in use. Um, I actually broke this demo earlier this morning, so I've only got half of the demo, I'm sorry. Uh, but to just show you this in action, uh, if the developer tools will play ball with me here, uh, we can actually see here we've got, I'll uh, just crank the zoom up on that. Oh, you get out of the road. There we go. We can see here that we're using all of our tags. So we've got our MGT Contoso person tag and all of the tags all the way down the tree inside there use this Contoso disambiguation so they won't collide with any other registered instance of, of that in the page. Um, this will mean that you can have solutions from lots of different versions of MGT inside the same SharePoint page without causing issues. Um, I will say right now we can't support MGT SPFX uh, moving forward using this mechanism. Um, that is currently looking to be discontinued with the vote as of version three. And hopefully this is useful to a whole bunch of you. I think it is, and I think that's, that's great work. Thank you, uh, Gavin, for sharing this. That's all coming into V3. Uh, from a date standpoint, we are looking at having a preview in the next few, I'd love to say days, but I think we're going to say a couple of weeks, um, where somewhere early in the next year where we're going to have probably our V3 available. So quite um, excited about you guys to start trying it out and, and enjoy the, the future of, of the Graph Toolkit. Quickly, quickly, what's new around the community and what we're going to come out with? Uh, we're going to build new scenario-based simple solutions so you can start from something that uh, delivers value right away, not just random, just simple um, templates. We're going to really build React and HTML and Vue and all of these scenario-based simple solutions. I already shared in, in, the, in the chat um, on how to share your feedback. Uh, so please use the link that I shared there to uh, share the feedback you have around MGTV3. And finally, a couple of resources uh, that I'd love you to go, our repo, our docs, our samples, our playground. And if you want to do some of our Microsoft Learn modules, more than happy to have you go there. Thank you for the opportunity to come talk to you all. We're very open to feedback, so feel free to chime in and I'll stop sharing. And thanks all. Thank you so much, Seb and Gavin. Really appreciate the demos and the walkthrough of what's coming up. Uh, look for folks to contribute into there, share feedback, and so forth.